Johnny guys, and today we're talking about the beast. The beast. But remember, the beast is mine. I fly its new all in one flight controller plus electronic speed controller combo. And they have a pair of these options, actually, a quad of these options. So you have a plethora of options. Show me the beast. So what makes this thing so beastly? We've seen these all-in-one toothpick mounting boards before, but never before have I seen one with such a gloriously arrangement of fets. Look at these motor pads on the edges. Very nice top and bottom pad mounting with a notch. So that means this really is meant for full size motor wires. Also have a very nice um, section for your power leads right here. Look at the arrangement of caps and beautiful fets. These are arrangement so that you have three fets on the bottom, three fets on the top for each motor. Uh, that should give you a lot and that gives this a rating of 45 amps uh, with an F7 processor, the MPU 6000 gyro that you want. And of course, it is plug and play for the Vista. Hasta la Vista, baby. Or any of the DJI systems, except for the air unit. And it is also plug and play for analog. So you still have your analog pads. This will run you about $69.99. Uh, but there is another one inside here. What, two beasts? That's right, if you wanna step it up, a notch and boost your power even more. You can get an upgraded one for an extra $20. You get an H7 processor with all of the speed that that comes with. And in addition, your ESC amp rating goes up to 55 amps. Is this real life? Can you really get that high of an amp rating? Um, well, I'm gonna put this to the test. So be sure you're subscribed because I'm putting this on a full size five inch build and I'm going to attach some massive motors and run it on 6S and see if this holds up. Now on some of the other higher rated ones, the 35 amp J Hemku, the Hi-Fi on RC, I put those on smaller builds. I did do five inch on the J Hemku with the Shocker, but those were small motors. But if they're advertising this as 55 amps, it should be able to hold its own with a full size build carrying a GoPro. So stay tuned, you're not gonna wanna miss it. I'm gonna show you if this thing really is a beast or if it explodes into a burst of flames because if we're going down, we're going down in a blaze of glory. Um, and why am I gonna do this? Why this torture test? It's just because, you know, I could take a $25 Racer Star 35 amp anniversary edition, put it on any build and have the confidence that it's gonna last. This is paying a little bit more, but that's because you get the processing power on board, you get the ease of use, you get the simplicity, you get the reduction in weight. So I wanna know, does this really hold up? Do you actually get more for your money? And if it does hold up, then this is a great solution because for those that don't wanna mess with the toothpick size, they're actually coming out with a similar complement of versions that are gonna have 30 by 30 mounting single layer. We've always dreamt of the days when you could have that single layer board, that quick build. I used to use the Racer Star Star 4S in a couple of builds back when I was first beginning. And they actually were super fast to build, so easy, so much space but they just didn't hold up once you started crashing harder. So they were totally fine for me at the beginning, but once I started racing, carrying action cameras, crashing harder, they didn't hold up. But these, a few years later, with all of the advancements in the hobby, just might. Stay tuned. Thanks, guys.